the truth the girls. Hi everyone. Well, I've been reading about mad science all week, so I figured I'll give you a little mad science digest. The good, the bad, and the fugly. Poop enemas, Neanderthal babies, rotten vaccines, and uh, viral fragments found in GMO crops. So let's start with the Neanderthal baby, shall we? Scientists seek surrogate mother for Neanderthal baby. This looks like something you might see on the Inquirer, but it's for real. Some scientist is looking for a woman to carry um, a Neanderthal baby clone. I gotta be honest with you, there's a part of me that thinks this is kind of cool. I mean, you know, it would be a Neanderthal, an ancient human type being living among us. It would be kind of cool. But on the other hand, well, you clone animals and you have a lot of problems and I think it would be kind of unethical because the Neanderthal is basically a human. So, well, they'd be cloning a human or the type of human. And what's next? What's going to be next after that? They're going to clone the Neanderthal and then they're going to say, well, let's just clone humans and maybe we'll just clone humans and use their organs or who knows. So it's a bit like a door that maybe shouldn't be open. So as a Canadian, I would have to say, Ixnay on the Neanderthal, eh? Next uh, article, European report links swine flu vaccine to narcolepsy. There have been something like 800 cases of um, narcolepsy in Finland since they, they had that universal vaccination campaign a few years ago. Sweden and Finland, they've seen a lot of narcolepsy and it's a very serious disease, it's permanent. Um, the vaccines, uh, this was because of an adjuvant. It's just so dangerous. For what? For the flu? Minimum of 40 children paralyzed after new meningitis vaccine. So this was a meningitis vaccine called Menafrivac, which was designed spe specially for use in, um, in Africa because vaccines have to be kept very cold and that's a challenge if you're in a hot African country uh, on the last leg of the trip especially. So an Indian company called Serum Institute of India Limited made this vaccine uh, which is supposed to be able to be kept at higher temperatures than other vaccines. Uh, but there's a problem. Uh, they, they gave this vaccine and about 40 children became paralyzed because of it. Well, they say that it could be kept at temperatures up to 40 degrees for up to four days. However, as they point out here, if you go on the manufacturer's website, they say Menafrivac should be stored and transported between 2 to 8 degrees centigrade. So you kind of have to wonder what happened here. Did they, did they they store it not at the right temperature? Was it a bad vaccine? I say this was a case of rotten vaccine and it's just, it's just terrible. I think that they really experiment on people in third world and they, they just consider their children like, what do you call it? collateral damage, but they're not collateral damage, they're human beings. Anyhow, um, here's some good news. Fecal transplants succeed in clinical trial. Ah yes, the poop enema. I've talked about these before. It sounds kind of yucky, but they actually have a lot of purposes in medicine. Well, now they're finding also, surprise, surprise, that using the uh, fecal transplant can cure these very uh, dangerous gut infections like C. difficile. You get C. difficile from having been given antibiotics which ruins your gut flora, then you get this horrible diarrhea virus and then what do they do? They give you more antibiotics. So I'm glad to see that they're looking in this direction and that it's, um, it's proving to be helpful. Okay, here's the bad news. Regulators discover a hidden viral gene in commercial GMO crops. Uh, I'm no scientist, but just right off the bat, this doesn't sound good to me. Uh, they said they have found fragments of the cauliflower mosaic virus in uh, many different transgenic crops. It says uh, they discovered is that of the 86 different transgenic events commercialized to date in the United States, 54 contain portions of the gene 6 within them, which is from the cauliflower mosaic virus. And they're asking, you know, what could this pose maybe a threat to people's health or to the environment or to the plants themselves? I think it's a fair question to ask. And how should this be dealt with? Should it be dealt with a recall? Or should they just say that, well, there's no evidence that it's dangerous, so let's just keep going the way we're going and more research is needed. That's probably what they're going to do because if they have to recall everything, it's going to look very bad for the GMO industry. They're not going to like that at all. The fact that it's in so many of these crops really makes me wonder 
you know, if I could tell you honestly whether this was put in there on purpose. And they're talking about how it could maybe um, alter your immune system, uh, that this, this type of virus can may, may, maybe make you more susceptible to bacterial infections. You know, there are people out there who would like to depopulate the world and, you know, a lot of these people are involved with these huge biotech companies, so I wouldn't put it past them to slip some kind of gene fragment into the, the crops and then feed them to everyone and, and insist that they not be labeled so you don't even know if you're getting it or not. But this is just, whoops, this is just another piece of evidence that the GMOs are dangerous and not to be trusted. So that's the, the news, the good, the bad, and the fugly. I guess the fugly would be the Neanderthal, <laughs> the poor thing. I wonder if they're going to do it. What do you think? Let me know what you think. And thanks for listening to me, and I'll see you next time.